Uh, hi everyone. Uh, the first question is, can you hear us? Good. Uh, the second question is, can you see us? <laughs> Sorry? What if you're blind? What? Blind? Yeah, someone could be blind. <laughs> yes. Thanks for pointing that out. We'll take it into consideration next time. <laughs> This is a talk about the um, ECI, what it is and what it can do. Um, yeah, we are two pirates from two different places. Um, this is Jerry from um, Luxembourg. And what do you do there, actually? Like for a living or no, usually? <laughs> uh, I'm a pirate. I'm a basis pilot. I was vice president. Ah, I remember something like that. Founding member, but I'm just a free pirate at the moment. <laughs> yeah, we have one free pirate set. <laughs> yes. uh, my name is uh, Gilles Bordelais, and um, I am currently uh, a shitload of stuff, actually. <laughs> um, I'm um, working for the... Um, I'm head of the working group on Europe for the Pirate Party of Germany. I'm a candidate for the European election, I'm on the list, I'm on the ballot. Um, I work for the international international coordination as an attaché for France and per extension the French speaking countries. Um, that's one of the few things I can name off my head. Um, yeah. And you already talked about this subject on the conference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was talking about this subject uh, on the Postama conference of 2012 at the time, and Jerry wrote the thing at the time, and did this time today as well, so I'm very thankful um, that towards Jerry that he keeps working on this. Jerry, actually what he didn't mention is he's working on this topic of the um, um, ECI because he's actually following it quite closely. He's monitoring the, um, this whole process, how it works, and that's a huge advantage for us. Um, can you maybe tell a few things about how? Yes. Uh, well, there is a, uh, an NGO, it's the, um, uh, an NGO that has been fighting for a uh, better European citizens initiative. So whenever we're talking about ECI, uh, yes, it just says just ECI. So ECI is the European Citizens Initiative, which is quite a new tool in uh, European democracy. Uh, it has been uh, active since uh, 1st of April 2012. So it's not an old tool, no an old instrument. <coughs> Sorry, uh, it's not an old instrument, but uh, there has been uh, ongoing fights before the first of April 2012 to get it to the point uh, to where it started in April. So there was uh, many many NGOs were there before 2012 fighting for a regulation that actually fits the requirements of direct democracy. And of course, it's not perfect. We're gonna uh, dive into that just in a few minutes. It's not perfect, but it could have been much worse. Like there were uh, conditions that were just uh, so incredible, incredibly hard to get for any campaigners that it would have been really impossible to have any influence at all. And there are a few NGOs that uh, fought there uh, with political parties too to get this improved. And I'm in contact with one of those NGOs, and I'm also following a few ECIs in Luxembourg. So uh, it's a tool that can be helpful, but uh, you must know what you're getting to when you're trying to start an ECI, because there are several problems with it. Uh, some of them have been improved over the last few months. Some of them remain. And uh, we are not sure yet what actually the impact of a successful ECI is, because there has, at the moment, officially just been one. And the result, what the result is, we're going to see, but the result of a successful ECI has been discussed Monday, so this Monday, in the European Parliament. So, like I said, it's a really new tool, and we're not sure about the effects of it, but uh, we can be hopeful, even if there are a few problems. So um, I'll just quickly go over what an ECI is without going into details. So don't ask me what in Estonia you need uh, to do 
uh, to sign an ECI because uh, every uh, 28 member states of the European Union can fix that and it is fixed in the regulation. So in France you have a whole uh, bunch of uh, requirements that you can fulfill. You can sign with your ID, you can sign with your social security or something and uh, up to you can sign with a number that you have been attributed as a, a old resistance member from the Second World War. So there are a lot of weird uh, requirements that you can fulfill to sign a European Citizens Initiative and they are different from country to country. Um, and we'll come back to that too because that can be a problem when it comes to uh, data protection and who is able to sign an ECI. Um, like I mentioned, it was active on the, the first ECI could have been officially launched in 1st of April 2012. Uh, it was because the ECI as an instrument was fixed in the Lisbon Treaty and uh, there was some time to get uh, all the requirements, all the regulation up to date, so the official launch was 1st of April 2012. And it is the first instrument that you could call kind of a bit of direct democracy in the European Union. Of course, it's in no way comparable to what we see in uh, Switzerland. But that being said, there isn't a lot of uh, instruments in the world that are comparable to the direct democracy model of this uh, of, of Switzerland. So um, it is more than what existed before. Uh, you have, for example, the possibility to uh, send a petition to the European Parliament that one existed before. Uh, the difference is there you can send it as a private person, as an individual, uh, you can send it as a group, but there is no real effect like the Parliament will take it into consideration. There are a lot of steps that can be done, but it's not like when you have this many signatures for a petition, the Parliament will do this and there will be this and this effect. So it's really a more individual uh, pleading that you can address to the parliament. The same goes for the European Ombudsman. You can send uh, her a complaint uh, that you encountered in your actions with, or in your interactions with the uh, EU administrations. You can send uh, her a complaint and then she will take that into account and she will try to address that. But it's not, um, model of uh, democracy. You cannot tell her, I want this regulation changed. You can only tell her, in the application of this regulation, I was badly treated by the administration. So... It's quite a shame, really. I mean, it's too cold and ombudsman and it's a woman. She's a woman, yes. Yeah. <laughs> it's uh, they Emily O'Reilly. The from... Sorry? They could have changed the title. Um, well, actually, uh, do we have a Finnish person here, somebody who speaks Finnish? I think ombudsman. It's a Finnish. Uh, well, you have it in German as well. The Swedish word, but the thing is, it's not the man, the, it's not related oh, right. to gender. So, uh, ombudsman in Swedish, you tell me? Right? Swedish or Finnish, I'm not sure, but if you tell me Swedish and it's Swedish, it's not actually related to the gender. Ah. So, it's not ombudsman, ombudsfrau okay. in Swedish. <laughs> That's why they uh, don't change it, but in some countries they do. But. Uh, Okay. Like, just just get back to the ECI. Like, it, this is one and one of the, these other abbreviations that we have like loads of them. If you have ever looked at the European Parliament, you have all those committees, and they all have those pseudo French uh, abbreviations. So ECI. That's um, um, Economic Conference for the Incompetence. No, that's um, no. We already said it. Did you pay attention? <laughs> no, <sorry. laughs> no, it's uh, European Citizens Initiative. Okay, so, so why is it European? Because it applies to the citizens of the European Union. So if you're a member of a country of the, Euro well, if you're a citizen of a country of the European Union, which there are 28 now, with Croatia joining a few months ago, you can create um, or launch a citizens initiative with six other people uh, from different, from other member states. So you need uh, different people from different member states to launch a citizens initiative. So it's not like uh, you have six Germans or six Luxembourgish people. You are not able to launch a citizens initiative because it is, as you mentioned, European. 
The same goes for the signatures. For it to be successful, you need signatures from, uh, well, you need to have signatures from at least seven member states up to a certain uh, threshold. And you have quotas. Yes, you have quotas. So in small member states like Luxembourg or Malta, you need uh, 4,700 signatures for it to count. Mm. Uh, in Germany, I don't even know. It's 70,000 such. Whatever. It's always 750 times the number of members in Parliament. All right, so you have a calculation that they basically says, okay, we want to see what the Commission says, is we want to see 1 million signatures. But if only like, if it was only 1 million signatures, obviously the UK, France, or Germany, uh, if they had a national um, topic that they were really hot about, they could just by themselves produce those this number of signatures, which has actually happened. Uh, we'll talk about it later. Um, so just to make sure it actually is a European issue and not only a national issue, um, the Commission said, well, you have to gather those signatures. You have to meet the quotas in at least seven countries. And like to start the ECI, you need at least seven people from at least seven countries of the uh, Union. So that's uh, gives us the kind of guarantee that it is actually a European, well, that the issue has European backing. That's not only the, the problem of one country. Yes, and the thing is, uh, you mentioned it, to be successful, you need one million signatures from these different countries um, with <coughs> different quotas. But uh, what actually means successful? Like, you collected your 130, your one million signatures, and then uh, what happens then? You know what? We forgot to ask. Who actually um, have ever heard about the ECI? Who, who's ever heard about it? Okay, okay. Who thinks he or she actually knows about the ECI or you know, really has knowledge? For you? Well, not only I've heard about it, but I know how it works, I know what it does and stuff. Okay, what are you guys doing here? No, you're actually not representative. <laughs> you're not representative. Okay. And who has actually signed one? All right. Yeah. Who ran into any problems while signing one? I don't believe you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Cool. So, um, good because then we're not going to go into the details about how many signatures you need in your country. I mean, you can all. Uh, use your search engines uh, of your choice to get into that. Uh, what we're trying to focus on and what was the idea is to go more into the discussion about what are there for problems, how uh, could we improve on them, and uh, is it a useful tool? So that's the, the point of this, not going into the technical details about yeah. article this and this says you need signatures from here and there. Uh, oh. oh, go ahead. Yes, for example, there is one ECI about cannabis. Uh, uh, it's, it's, yet, it's yet running. It's with Will Dye to talk. Yeah. But when you, when you want to see it for the moment, it's, it's launching in November. Mm -hmm. And it, that the Commission is doing an official system? Yeah, we will explain this. Wait, I just signed it, so I'd like to basically. It is, a, it is, it is running, yes. Okay. It is yes. running. Okay. Basically, the, the, the thing is, when you, when you get to seven people together from seven different countries, you have an association if you, if you want. And then you can address the, the commission and say, well, we have this topic. And um, you can either, either say, we have this topic, we don't formulate it very precisely, but we want you to take a stand on this, as you can do. Or you can actually cite the treaties, the laws, and say, well, in paragraph so and so, please change this. Uh, you can say it, do that as well. Then the commission actually says, well, we, what? Did you say treaties? Yeah. Because that's the thing, you cannot change the treaties. No, 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 sure, but according to the treaties, you, should <laughs> make, you can sign the treaties to tell the Commission you should yes. make something about this. Um, and that, that's the whole point, because the Commission can actually say, that, well, nice idea, but we're not, um, it's not our job. Like, if you want to change the treaties, not our job. So the Commission will say, sorry, we won't register this, um, this ECI. Um, once it's, it's registered, or however, you can start gathering signatures, and then the trouble begins. Yeah, but you already mentioned the first problem, which is the registration that we had of the Commission. So, um, the treaty say you are not allowed 
to go out of the scope of the European Commission's competencies, which is quite understandable. I mean, you cannot tell the, com uh, the Commission, uh, please uh, improve the safety of the road in front of my house, and the Commission is not at all responsible for that in a legal sense, according to the treaties of the European Union and the function of the European Union. Uh, however, the interpretation of the treaties is at the hand of the Commission. So uh, there has been some problems with uh, ECI's registering, with uh, people from the citizens of the EU trying to register their initiative when they have even refused registration. Uh, the first citizens initiative that has been refused was about nuclear power. So there were a certain amount of citizens who wanted to have an initiative basically saying we don't want nuclear power in the EU. The Commission said, well, we cannot allow that because it's about the uh, nuclear energy and an energy is uh, a separate treaty. That's the Euraton Treaty, which is not part of the competences of the Commission to legislate about, so we cannot allow that. The problem is that, for example, the Commission has the competence, according to the treaties, to submit uh, ideas on how to amend treaties. So you could say our initiative encourages the Commission to submit the idea to change the Euratom Treaty. <coughs> now, if you're open to the direct democracy and stuff, perhaps the Commission would say yes, okay, we can interpret it that way, but they refuse it. On the other hand, uh, other ECIs where you could say, well, the same applies too for them, they were accepted. There is the citizens initiative right to vote, which says basically we want every EU citizen to be able to vote in European and national elections in the country that they are living in. Like, I'm live, if I'm living in Germany, I should be able to vote for the Bundestag, which is not the case in the moment, at the moment. And uh, this ECI was accepted, even though the procedures on the voting procedures in the member state is legislated by the member state. It's not in the competence of the Commission. So there's always the conflict about which ECIs are being registered and which not. And as I said, it's a new tool, so it might still be a bit uh, uncertain on how to interpret the, the, the treaty on this issue. But at the moment, uh, it's not that clear. If you are launching an ECI, will it be registered or not? And the problem is that it's at the mercy of the Commission. And are the arguments public when yep. it's not registered? Yeah, that's that's one of the things you have to say about, about the whole thing. It's It's quite transparent. There is a website that lists every initiative, uh, including the one that gets um, uh, refused. It wasn't at the beginning, but after I sent them a mail, they changed it. <laughs> He's not lying. He actually sent them a mail and they replied. They actually changed the website. That's not a lie. So sometimes just being asking nicely can change at least these kind of things. But not to treat it, that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so you can see on the website um, what's the name of the institutes, who's, well, well, yeah, who's behind it, um, how much money do they have. If you enter an initiative, you have to, to say, okay, we have 5,000 euros to do the campaign or 10,000, whatever. Um, uh, at the end, they'll also show how many signatures you've um, accumulated from which country they came from. So it's, it's all quite well document, documented. The, you can't be complaining about that. Yes, for once, transparency has been respected. Like, if you donate to an ECI, uh, it will be, it has to be published. Um, of course, that's all at the responsibility of the citizens' committee, so the people that register the initiative. So it adds to their workload, which is already quite high. Um, and. Coming to that, that problem with the workload is also uh, a second big problem and probably the biggest one since the launch of the initiative is the online collection tool. So um, <coughs> the fact is that on April 2012, the idea was that every citizens committee, so the people registered, registering the initiative, 
they can look for themselves how they get the collection, how they get their online system running. So everybody is free to set up their system, but they have to um, they have to uh, recognize some requirements of uh, data protection, for example. Now the problem is that these requirements were extremely high. It was extremely costful to uh, get those checked. So in the end, uh, not really uh, many initiatives were able to set up their online collection system. Yeah. So they were left with paper versions. Yeah, to make it clear, you were, you were allowed to do your own system for collection, but uh, basically no one managed this. Um, friendly enough, the commission actually set up uh, one version, so they, you, can, you could get from, uh, from the commission one software to run yourself, but the thing is, this software had only been tested with Windows and Oracle, and uh, although it should have run on uh, free software, it just didn't. So um, at the end, the problems were so big because nobody was able to run uh, a, a, an online collection of signatures, even when using the Commission's tools, that the Commission actually said, well, it's just not working, we'll just host the system ourselves. So for all the, the first ECIs, the Commission has actually been hosting the, the, the signature collection system themselves, which well, at least is a step. It, yeah, exactly. So again, the system is pretty useless. So if you're trying to rely on the Commission the, the system that is provided by the Commission and try to host it yourself. Uh, you need a lot of nerves and you need a lot of even money if you can, if you don't know the, if you don't have the know-how yourself. And even then, the system is not very campaigner friendly. You cannot ask for emails, uh, you cannot really check very easily how many signatures you've got. Uh, the whole first page where you land, it's not like sign here, but it says like regulation number, blah, 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 the data protection here and somewhere there hidden is the button to sign. So it's not really campaigner friendly and uh, that's a quite a fight with the commission to get this one uh, uh, working properly and they have been made, they have made some changes and there again, um, one cannot really say that they're not trying but it's just the system is broken by design, so actually you have to start from scratch. And uh, as a campaigner, you have to make sure to know that this is a problem. And before you start registering your initiative, make sure you know somebody who knows how to deal with this stuff. Because there were a lot of initiatives who were very, like, these people, there are a lot of campaigners who do campaigning for, for a few years, but not with this tool, because it's new. So they just register their initiative, they're very happy if it gets registered, and then they realize, well, today I got uh, told it's registered, so now I have one year to collect one million signatures in the whole uh, the European Union. So the clock is ticking, and if you take three or four months to get an online system running, you lost already nearly half of your uh, time to actually collect the signatures. Three to four months is actually not, not imaginary. It's three uh, time that you will need because um, you have not only to set up the software, but you have to apply for registration, for certification that your standards of um, data protection are sufficient, both for the, on for the online tools uh, uh, and for the paper version. You have to tell how are you going to um, um, carry the, 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 those paper forms, how are you going to store them. Um, I mean, fr I guess from a German point of view, it must be actually quite cool because you can always very rarely say the data protection has been respected. They are very much onto it. Uh, but for the campaigners, it's it's bad. I mean, Jerry mentioned it. If you you have this website where all these people you're going to motivate to sign on, um, you're never going to see them again. People are going to enter the data, and not you won't see these people, and you won't have their data. So, which means, for example, if six months later you want to tell them, okay, well, we have reached so and so many, please contact your friends. You can't. If you have on a separate web page collected the data you need to contact those people that are actually interested in your topic, you won't be able to because you can't use the data you collect. You can't use the signatures. I mean, you are anyway. Most of you signed already, so you know how it looks. Uh, you have your campaign website, which is always very beautiful. It has the big shiny titles and images and sign here button, and then pops up the commission website where it's all 
grey and uh, bureaucratic <laughs> and uh, regulations are mentioned and data protection rules and you have to click three times and then there comes a timeout and everything. So the ECIs that have been working so far, they lost thousands and thousands of signatures like that. There has been error messages and everything. Um, so if you're thinking about launching uh, an ECI, uh, make sure to have a good tech team. And if you're trying to sign an ECI and it doesn't work, don't be angry with the citizens committee. Try again uh, in a few hours because it's not their fault. And to come back to data protection, yes, uh, of course, the data protection is a huge issue and it should be uh, respected, especially at the European scale where the Parliament and the Commission is always fighting for stronger data protection rules. The problem is also there, the citizens committee, so the people, the campaigners, they are responsible. So in principle, if you are collecting on paper, you need to have your safe where you put your paper bags full of signatures. And the safe has to be certified. <laughs> so it's not a joke. You have a lot of uh, problems with the current data protection rules that might treat, hinder on citizens' participation. So there you need to ask yourself and we need to ask ourselves if we want stronger data protection or more and easier participation. So that was the question? Or? Okay. Um, it's been explained to me that way. You have, um, at the Commission you have several people from several departments working on such a thing as like the ECI. And you have people working on, well, let's get the, those people to sign. And you have the people from the, the security department, if you want, uh, that says, well, yeah, sure, but we have to do it that and that, and that way, but because otherwise it's not safe. And they don't really meet in the middle. So they will push their motives first. Mm -hmm. And um, in that case, obviously, the, the safety has come first, which is not a bad idea, but the usability has uh, suffered mm -hmm. a lot. Um, one thing about data protection is what? How about falsification? How about data safety? Have you heard about this? And think about it because the, we, what we're talking about now is just um, the cumbersome side of data safety. Like um, you have people needing to provide some ID to sign, but um, how about well, the safety of the system as well? How, who votes for? Um, the fact that nobody is going to enter the system somehow and change 2,000 signatures from zero. Well, at the moment, it's the Luxembourgish IT authorities because <laughs> the, the, as we mentioned, there have been problems, a lot of problems with getting the online system running. And the Commission uh, listened to some of the complaints and they said, okay, we see there's a problem, so we let you host. Uh, your online collection system on our servers and these servers uh, and all the, the 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 whole system setup is being done by Luxembourgish authorities. So at the moment, if you have a, a signature collection software running that from the Commission, they are both Luxembourg, and of course, there it's all this uh, security comes first. So that shouldn't be a problem. Uh, the thing is, uh, if you collect a paper, of course, somebody can just lose the bag of uh, signatures and it can then end up somewhere in a, in a dumpster or something. So there again, you have the, the conflict between <coughs> how much data should be protected versus how much participation should be allowed. But that's a, a, a problem that we can discuss later. So that's yeah. not really something that a, a treaty change will uh, Will, will solve, but that's also a problem for us. I mean, we like data protection and we like citizen participation, and sometimes they collide. Um, we already mentioned it too. Uh, I'm just looking at the, the clock or bit uh, on the wrong time. Um, money. I have here problem number three money. So, of course, uh, having a European campaign. It all sounds pretty fun, and yeah, we want democracy at the European Union, but... Uh, yeah, the Commission is paying for the server. At the moment, but it, that's just a temporary... Yeah, no, but still, I mean, you could, you could imagine it's actually free. It is, well, yes, nothing comes free. <laughs> no, of course, if you want to be successful, you have to invest some money. I mean, we're not just talking about uh, printing flyers, having some information meetings and stuff, but all this, this technical equipment 
And uh, even if the, the signature system at the moment is hosted by, by the commission, also free of charge, um, this is just a temporary solution. So in a few years, in principle, you have to host it yourself. And also for one year, it has to work. Uh, if it crashes, then your signatures are gone. If it really goes very long, so you have to invest some money there. And of course, uh, before even registering ECI, there is a possibility to send a draft legislation uh, to the Commission. So a draft legislation can be included in the, in the ECI, saying we want to change this and this legislation with the one we are proposing and people are signing to have that, re uh, to have that replaced. Of course, uh, you need a lawyer to have a look at that if you submit a piece of legislation or try to change a piece of legislation that can have some uh, influences on uh, your budget. If you really have, want to have good legislation, then you need some lawyers to have a look at it, which probably won't be free. And uh, just the, 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 the campaign itself, you have to set up a website, you have to uh, have people write on it, you have to gather it to... Sorry? Gatherings? Yes, like information meetings, and this is European-wide, so you cannot just do it in uh, in, in Luxembourg and in Germany, you now you have to have at least seven places in Europe where you have to do that. So uh, it's also some ECIs uh, that I've worked with underestimated the costs and also the human resources that you need to be successful. So you also the thing is that you cannot just start an ECI and then hope that it grows into something without work. And with work you need people and you need a network. So if you don't have a network, a European-wide network, uh, it is very unlikely that your ECI can be successful. So you already have to start with a network. And if you're looking at uh, two successful ECIs for the moment, we have the Right to Water. You probably heard of that one. That was in the uh, that was discussed in Parliament in uh, this Monday. So the Right to Water initiative collected over uh, one and a half million signatures. Uh, it was, again, water privatization, water is a human right. And the thing is, it was, <coughs> it was relying on a very strong network of, uh, of workers' unions, of uh, left parties in whole of uh, Europe that helped a lot with collection of signatures. So it was not one organization was not uh, one group of people, but it could be a network that was already existing before they launched the ECI. And that's why it was successful. You read the network. I've, I've had, uh, since the ECI has started, I've had um, several discussions with people saying, well, that's a great tool, let's use it, let's you know, push some ID forward. And really, um, the idea of, of, starting, of starting with the ID basically is just wrong. You have to start with the people that are, are going to, to, to put that into motion. You really need to have the people on standby or actually working uh, that you know, okay, we have in all those countries people that are going to go on the street, tell the people to sign, walk around with some formulas in, in the hand. Um, you really need a huge network. It doesn't matter if it's paid or it's for, uh, you like. You have to have an idea because people won't. No, no, actually no, because you, 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 need, you need to have people that are already mobilized. If you start with the ID, you count on the ID to mobilize a lot of people. Yeah. Just doesn't work. Yeah, if the ID is not good, then sorry, but it's... No, 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 no. But, well, that's not the big examples we have. We have two examples at the moment, and both f work because you had the network before you had the idea. And in, in one case... Oh, the idea to have the ECI, not like... Yeah, yeah, just exactly. Yeah. You had, uh, in, in the, well, the case of White Water, you had people being motivated by... Um, keeping things in through the public hand generally and then you could motivate them to do the right to water initiative you didn't start with the right to water and then create the network under it that actually you know it just sounds strange to me to have a net like a group of people networking together to pass forward any random no no not any random but you, have, you have to reach a network that will carry your idea for example the basic income initiative anyone signed it here well, of course, you don't have to if you. So, uh, so you know the the ECI about basic income. The, there is the idea of basic income, of course, that existed before the ECI, but there wasn't a European-wide 
connected network. Yeah. So there were, of course, in many countries, different people working together on the idea of basic uh, income. Uh, in some of the countries, it was stronger. In other one, in other countries, it was more of a uh, not not a network, more of different groups. And they launched the ECI, and in the middle of the campaigning, they also structurized their network. Mm -hmm. So. For example, they passed some time on structurizing a French basic income network, and that was done in the middle of the campaign when the ECI was already registered. So, of course, you don't have to under underestimate these people. All of these campaigners are very uh, enthusiastic, very motivated. Finally, there is this tool that allows us to have a say in Europe, and we want to use it as soon as possible. But perhaps the idea is to say, uh, well, Let's do it next year or in a six months, and first we build our network, and then we launch the ECI. Because the thing also is nobody stops you from registering your ECI twice or three times, but you uh, need the resources also two or three times. Then you need motivated people, and of course the, we all know it from if you already participated in an election campaign, <laughs> you're always very motivated the first time, and then but if you're doing well, not lose, but if just you're just tired afterwards. I mean, you don't have to lose in elections to be tired afterwards. Uh, it's just a campaign over one year. Uh, at some time, you want to say, okay, it's over, and uh, we'll try again, but not in the next two years. So, if you really want, and it's a it's a really huge project, a successful ECI. It, it, a million signatures is a lot. It's doable, but uh, be prepared. That's the thing. Yeah. So have your network ready, uh, have everyone motivated, sitting on their seats, when is it going to be registered, have the system running, your online signature running, and then go for a whole year, but not, uh, don't start uh, over-motivated over and let's just register yeah. and we'll see what happens then. <laughs> we, we haven't yet seen an example of, I mean, that, that could be, it could be worth it a try, like to have, try, to have the idea of ECI, try to, to, to create the network that is going to um, hold it and and um, then register once yeah. the network is operated. But we have seen that yet. What we have seen is the right to water based on the unions, as uh, as Jerry said. And we have the um, one of us, one of us, yeah, one of us campaign, which is a pro life, pro -life campaign, uh, so uh, against abortion, mm -hmm. and is okay. uh, basically uh, using the church network. So once again, we have a network of people on the ground everywhere. Like you have a union mostly everywhere, you have a church mostly everywhere. So you have a functioning network of people, even if you didn't uh, include them into the planning process, you have a hierarchy that's going to be able to say, here, if you form, can you please uh, um, you know, uh, spread them after mass or whatever. So um, it's, it's a huge bonus. And these are the only two ECIs at the moment that have reached the goal. That have reached over a million. Mm -hmm. The one of us is still being, uh, the ECI one of us is still being um, evaluated. evaluated. So they're not officially yet declared as, yes, all your signatures are valid. You will have your hearing at EP. So that's uh, the first hearing uh, at the European Parliament. That was a right to vote. It was on Monday. So really, this is uh, very new, also. So perhaps it would be it would be very really, really nice to see an uh, an ECI being registered and then it's really growing, growing, and then at the, at the end it being success, successful without having structured networks. Because I mean, pirates are also like swarms and swarm wise and everything. So uh, we don't really want to have a strict structure. But what we have been seen so far is that uh, you need one to make it work. And um, just to come back, what make it work actually means, and we are mentioned a few times already, is the hearing in uh, the European Parliament that was on Monday. Uh, sorry, you have a question? Yes. Well, the ECI about basic income generated a lot of publicity. Even if it is lost, we can use it the second time. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, th this is going to be the. Uh, we're going to finish with a positive end, so we're going to come back to that. Uh, first, we're going to talk about the problems, and then we're going to talk about what it actually is capable of doing. Yeah. Um, uh, yes. Go. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, the next talk is about to start in 10 seconds. What? Well, your time is up. One hour. No, not one hour. What 45 minutes back to back. Mm. <laughs> okay. So, um, what, is, what, is it, what does it do? Yeah. Yeah. You should yeah. put an initiative to make it one hour. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what does it do when you actually have gathered all your signatures in all the right countries, all the right number of countries, actually? What do you get? You get a hearing at the commission, you get a hearing in the parliament, and then? Then that's the question. So, as we are apparently we don't have that much time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, um, <laughs> No, no, no. Um, the positive note is, yes, problems here. Uh, we, we mentioned the problems, but as you mentioned correctly, an ECI can really put a topic on the agenda. Uh, if it is about right to water. When the right to water was being successful, they didn't even collect one million signatures yet. Uh, Commissioner Barnier already said, okay, we hear you, we will put this part out of the regulation. Uh, so it creates already a real impact just by being on the agenda. Also the right to water, uh, the basic income initiative, for example, it really created a buzz around the topic of basic income. It showed there is, it's a European-wide issue. So if you want to put something on the agenda and you want to make it a European-wide topic, you can always use the ECI as a, as a catalysator. It's really trying to push a topic into the public sphere. Of course, you still have to collect some signatures to get over a threshold to make it really interesting for media and for politicians. But uh, it's not that you nearly, it's not because an ECI doesn't create at the end a binding legal uh, legal um, piece of legislation that it doesn't have an impact and at, with the right to water we really see it can have a, a concrete impact also without being uh, in the treaty uh, legally binding on the commission so okay uh, so we're just just to say it up because i'm not sure we have said it in so many words if you actually success on the ci the commission is bound to nothing but to hear you out and then to say yes or no if they say no, they have to say why, but that's it. You can get all these signatures and have a commission say, well, thanks, but no. Um, at least they have to say why, and you should get it to, to generate some buzz about it. That's for sure. Um, what you can do, I think, is do ECI and try to like use the ECI as a sole mean of generating this buzz. You can use the ECI very well, I think, you know, as a way to generate, to, to motivate your troops. Like, hey, this is our goal, uh, this is what our network uh, uh, is there for, uh, let's try and reach this goal. So this is going to help you for your campaign, because you could do without the ECI. If you just have a topic, the, 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 the goal is to make, put something on the map, you could do some classic lobbying. We have seen people um, um, rejecting the idea of doing UCI or just, just giving it up and switching to a normal lobby. We've seen this because it's uh, basically easier. You can do it with, with fewer people in fewer places. Um, but you can use this tool as, 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 as a way to, to have a goal with all your people. So um, there's, there's something to say for it, even if, it's, if it doesn't work as in one minute signature and yeah and I'm, 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 i have to say something like uh, i have to um, repeat what jerry has basically don't underestimate the impact you do on the commission they listen more than what what their reputation says basically um, the right to water initiative was not launched to counter the uh, commission's idea of allowing privatization of the public uh, water market it was different, it was separate, but it collided. And then Barney first said, well, we're going to change a bit if so many, so many people are not, uh, don't, don't like this ID. And then so many people signed, and there was so much, but they were like, well, we just, we'll, we'll just give it up. Before, even before the ECI was completed. So don't underestimate the impact you can have on a European legis legislation, because we've seen it work. And I think that's a very positive thing. Um, for, for, for us, for, for a European institution, and um, yeah, for the power to the people. That's a perfect last word, I cannot make it better. <laughs> the power to the people. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you very much, and I hope we didn't take too much time from the next speaker.
Is he or she already in the room? Oh, oh it's you. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, thanks. Yeah. Cool.